Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth, and today joining me is Nanette Holmberg from Chenillet. This is my latest, latest fun. And we're going to have fun. We are. So, L Nanette, tell me, you didn't always do this. What no. did you used to do? My background is actually in fashion design. Making wedding dresses. I studied at, at uh, Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. I opened a, came back to Salt Lake and opened a shop, did bridal and evening gown for years, okay. couture work. And then what happened that took you into quilting? Well, about 20 years ago, I started doing a lot of wearable art. And I played around with a, the layered and stitch technique that we're all, we all call faux chenille uh -huh. now. Oh, okay. And actually wrote two books on that technique, layering and stitching fabrics. I started out with jackets designed from a calls pattern company and then started doing quilts. Okay. And then adding chenille to quilts. Well, and that, that, was, that was a process from the faux chenille. What I discovered after doing it for many years <laughs> was that it wasn't the layers of fabric that was creating the texture. It was the fabric itself. So if I only, I only needed, if I had the right fabric, I only needed one layer. Okay, so I remember. That's how this started. So you came to a quilt guild here at, at our facility in Handy Quilter, and as you were talking, I thought, I remember I did chenille. I got five layers of, of a, of a, pre-printed panel, lined them up together, put another layer underneath that for a backing, no batting, and sewed all that in horizontal lines, and then, or actually... You have to stitch on the bias. Right, stitch on the bias, because you wanted the bias for this. And then I had to cut four of those layers, or four or five of those layers, and the backing layer was my... It your held base. it all together. It was your base. The comment that you made with that is, that is really warm. You've That's got very five heavy. or six layers of fabric. I was making fabric. quilts as well as jackets. And so if you had five layers of fabric on a jacket and you lived in California, that didn't work or for Florida. you. Or yeah. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because so you make jackets. This is beautiful. And we'll be, and we'll be doing that today. That's right. We'll, we'll see how today. to do it. On the long arm. This is all going to be done on the long arm. That's what's so awesome. Because you can do it on a and domestic machine. You can. You can, but, but doing it on the long arm is just going to make it so fast and easy and you can do multiple steps all at one time. That's what's important. That's important. So you're going to layer your backing, your batting, your top, and then start adding chenille. And we're going to start with applique. You uh, can, so that's one of my favorites, raw edge applique. So uh, applique, you usually do a satin stitch or a blanket stitch around it, but by adding your chenille, you or a needle turn, it? which is, a, you know, oh, that's yeah. even yeah, yeah. more work. So we're, gonna, we're going to eliminate all of that. All right. Well, let's go through here and look at some of the fun things that you have. This, you said, is a no piecing. This quilt doesn't have any seams in it. So tell me how you did it then. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. There's no seams. So, so this is a wonky zigzag quilt. But I don't have any seams in this quilt. I, the green is my background. Okay. It's my base. The wonky zigzag is one big long raw edge applique. So you just cut it. So it's just cut any you. wonky. Mm -hmm. And lay that on top of your base and stitch the raw edges down and cover those edges up with chenille. Okay. Question then: Did you do that all in one step, as far as, or did you stitch this? this fabric first and then go back and do the chenille? You want to stitch the applique down first. Could I glue that down? Well, you can glue it down, but when, when you stitch, you don't have to, if you stitch that down first, you don't have to be quite as careful when you put your chenille down to okay. make sure you catch that edge. And I can stitch that on my long arm? Mm -hmm. You do that on your long arm and then you'll come back and cover that raw edge up with the 
Okay. okay. And we'll figure, oh, wait, while we're here, <laughs> you're binding thing. <laughs> this is awesome. How did it, you Everyone don't bind? Everyone loves to bind quilts. No, right? I don't. <laughs> That's my least favorite thing. <laughs> uh, this is a faster and easier way to finish the edge of your quilt, and it gives it a soft edge. So now I've got a soft edge along with. Right. So how did you do it? So there are two different widths of the chenille. Widths of the chenille. A three eighth. There's and a, a three eighth. The three eighths is what you're using on the raw edge applique. Okay, on here. And then the five eighths is what we use on the edge. Okay. And the first thing that you will do is either serge or zigzag the edge of your quilt. Okay. Because you want so that. You just want we to look not at have that. any. We don't want to have any raw edges right, where the threads will come out. Okay. So we got the serge. And then we're going to take a piece of the 5 eighths and stitch it on the back and stitch one on the front. Do you do finish. that at the same time? Or do you do... I like to do it on the back first because I'm going to extend it just maybe an eighth of an inch beyond my edge. Okay. And then when I flip it over to do the top, I can just follow that back piece. Oh, right. And, and it's, get it. And it's, real, it's much easier to sew on. Okay. So this is the chenille. And this is all biased. It's not just straight grain around it. And that's, and that's why it works, because it's perfect bias. Okay, so it's kind of, a, it has a little bit of a starch to it or stiffening. What does? Well, it's just kind of the texture of the fabric, but that's part of um, what is going to allow it to bloom when it's washed and dried. And what does bloom mean? Bloom means it's going to flop up and get all fuzzy and cozy. I like love this. that. I love that. It's that, I, that made me so. Because last month, in October, RHU Live, we did some of your techniques and spiders and different things, and they bloomed for us. It was so fun. So. You can really use it as an embellishment, too. Yes. Okay. What you're doing is embellishing your quilt. Right. Okay, let's move this one and tell me about this. Well, I've always been fascinated with stained glass quilts and the look of a stained glass quilt. And basically, you're working with a raw edge applique again. So I wanted to do a stained glass quilt and have the chenille be that black line that you see on the right. stained glass quilt. Is this color fast? Yes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. a good question mm -hmm. because if I were to add black or red or something and wash this because... Well, and even our new red now is color fast. We finally found a dye oh, that good. can make the red. That was the only color that we was a little bit tricky, but now the red is also color fast. Okay, you because... You can put red on a white quilt. To make this bloom, you have to wash it, right? Mm -hmm. Or else we do well, have a brush. And there is another option. Yeah, you yeah, can, we'll you can brush it up. We'll, yeah. we'll be talking about that too. But this one has been, you know, washer and And it just dryer. gives it such the fun quilted effect. Well, and it just, what I love about using it on raw edge applique is it makes your appliques pop. Mm -hmm. It just really makes it show up. Yeah, it defines it. And we, you'll see some real fun things as we go along. Okay, we'll put this one over here. All right. Just word. Word art is so fun. Let's see. That's okay. very popular right now, in, you know, for a home deck or in a room or on a pillow. There's so many ways you can use it. So you can just, you can get into, um, you, you do, select the font that you want and just do your, again, it's just raw edge applique. Right. Put it on and... Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a simple thing to make up and hang on your wall. Okay. All right. Now, wait a minute. Let's bring this back because I see the similar same colors going on in this quilt as we have in this. So these go together. Yes, that, that's the, the quilt that got the word that goes with this quilt. And which is another fun, very traditional technique. Okay, so hexes or English paper piecing because I, Cheryl, in the studio is doing all these little paper pieces there, uh, you know, she's doing that and it's taking I didn't, her forever. I didn't have to do very many of those to know I didn't want to you do didn't very many of those. <laughs> so tell me how you did this then. So instead of having all these little hexes, this is actually just the outside shape of the grandmother's garden. And it's just a raw edge applique it okay. is the outside shape of the right grandmother's here, garden. Right here. Right there. Uh -huh. Okay. And the, and the chenille is what's creating the hexes. So this is a piece placed on top. Right, in the center. So these aren't individual pieces. No. Oh, my goodness. That this would be so easy to it, do. It is so fast and easy to do. And, and 
the thing that the Chanel does for it, I think, is actually makes the hexagons show up more. Because if this was traditional paper piecing, um, all of this would be hand stitched together. Mm -hmm. You'd see one big flower. You would lose those individual hexes, but so that the lines of the hexes on this quilt are is just the chenille. It. Okay, so the process for this quilt. Let's open this up. You've pieced a quilt, and then you can put it on your long arm. And would you put these on? And then you can put those on, because you've got a stitch. You're quilted. So you're going to quilt this whole thing. You add this after it's on the long arm, and then quilt, and then add your chenille. That's the very last step you do. Right. Do it okay. on the long arm. That's the way you'd want to do it because uh, the quilt itself is done in blocks, so it's easy to right. to place mm -hmm. your your hexagons where you want them. Where once it's and on this there. is kind of mm -hmm. random because you're just going to do it on you know on those four on those blocks. Uh huh. And then I've also, you don't, have to be, you don't have to be quite so careful with all your seams because I've taken another hexi and put it over where my joints are. Where the, oh, good tip. Where the intersections are. Really good tip. So if, you're, you know, if you don't so want to take a all that time quilt, to make everything right, match perfectly. Right. Oh, that's a good idea yeah. on lots. On and lots I bet things. the chenille, even if you didn't put these on, the chenille would still hide mm -hmm. some. And you can also chenille. throw some chenille over your seams. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good tip. Good tip. All right. Okay. Here's another one. Another word quilt. Have to have one that says quilt on it. Absolutely. That's got to be hanging in your quilting studio. Black and fast and easy to do. So you quilted this, or did you, you did you put this on and then quilt I it all? actually on this one. I actually fused this on, and then. Put it on. Then you put it on the long arm and quilt it, and lay the chenille down as you're quilting. Okay. Okay. All right. Because there's a lot of curves going on there, and we're going to learn how to do that, right? But it's easy because it's now, all bias. Now this is a brand new, and I went out to uh, Nanette's studio and saw this one hanging in the works. So this is a brand new pattern, and you have patterns on your website for that we'll let you for know all about of the quilts. for all the quilts. So there's you have. Oh my gosh, you should go to her website. This we'll one is there. called Venetian Windows. And the same thing could happen. The same here. thing is happening here. And this is done almost like, like a snowflake. You've got you cut out when you cut out this applique, you end up with an inside and an outside piece. Okay. And then you can so it's really fun to lay out. You can switch out the centers and and really oh, okay. lay it out however you want. And then again, the triangles are over the seams. The seams. Oh, hiding. This is really pretty. All right. Now, this is one that I know Nanette loves because she keeps bringing this back. Vicki, we've got to see this. We've got, and I do too. I love this. Tell me what it's called. This is called Neverland. Neverland. And Almost. I love this quilt because it really shows the possibilities of what you can, what you can do with, with a chenille. Um, with accenting and making things just, I mean, even, I've even taken the 3 8 inch and cut it down smaller and used it on places like the railing and around the windows where I want really, really fine detail. Oh. I mean, so you're really not limited to, to what you do. You can do anything, you put it anywhere you want. Oh. But it just makes everything come, come alive. Okay. And the clouds. And then it has clouds. And then up above the clouds of London, you got to see this. Up above the clouds of London is the ship with Peter Pan and Wendy and the boys. Oh my word! So it just shows it just shows the possibilities of you're not you're not limited at all. And if you can dream it, you can chenille it. Well, we had fun last month doing that dreaming, and it was really fun. Okay, so to go along with that. There's actually a pillow. Look at that pillow. And for children, I mean, children love texture. the texture. They love the texture. They love their name on anything. But so this is the pillow that goes with that quilt. And, and pillows, again, are just done with raw edge applique. So this, you didn't even have, you didn't even quilt it. No. So you I just, just. I just stitched the words down. And then you did that same finish again. So you didn't have so to turn so it. So you don't have your you don't have to turn your pillows. You're not going to have any bulky seams. You're not going to have bulky corners because it's just all okay. surged together. 
Oh, wow. How fun. Oh. Fun on a bed, huh? Along with Perfect. the quilt. And then wow. the, this actually hangs on the wall, and there's a bed quilt that coordinates with it in the pillow. And who does this go so to? So you can do a whole, oh, I'm sure one of my grandsons will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move these aside because we have on our wall this really fun quilt with flowers and butterflies. And then we have a smaller one. I'm just kind of throw that there. We have a smaller one here on our frame. And we're going to actually let you quilt this. And uh, we've added our square foot to which works it's just amazing when you came that day i'm thinking okay which foot works the best and this has like just glides timing. right over it it does it does and it kind of gives you a measurement that you can stay in the center now do you use a ruler or do you just freehand quilt it i love to free motion Okay. I just, I love to free motion and with, with the chenille, it, that's one of the nice things about it too cause, because it doesn't have to be perfect. In the center because it's going to hide it. It's all, gonna, it's all going to bloom. So as long as you get that ribbon stitched down, yeah. that's all that matters. Okay, when you brought this today, you have, and I know down here in front of us are some pins and I noticed you've got some pins here that you, were, you glued this down first. What do you use for glue? I just use a water soluble glue stick. Oh, just your regular mm -hmm. children's craft like you, glue, like you'd use, yeah, for a child. And then uh, do you, you want to make sure it? it's water soluble. No, I didn't press it. You just it. glue it I on, and it that's it. That's it. And I know you pinned it because you were traveling here today. So yeah, I had some pins in it just be, just just to okay. keep it in so place. Okay, so it's glued down, and you've got the green. So you've already placed this for this the vines, but you're going to do some here. But let's start here. I'll bet you want those yeah, pins let's out. Let's take these pins out. So we'll stitch down to about here because that's what we have for us. And, and this design is a whole cloth quilt, so you can lay your vines down, your leaves wherever you want. That's what's. I'm going to see how much throat space we've got here. We'll just work on the top part of this flower. Okay. okay? So I'm going to bring this machine over to you, and you're going to start up there, right? I'm just. <laughs> and okay, so do you? I've got white thread. Yes, Does it matter using, what thread? We're just using white thread. I'm going to put my glasses on so okay. I can see. Okay, using white thread, what type of, I've got a, a 50 weight thread, a so fine. Is that about what you use? I, that, I use that a lot. Okay. That's something, because your, your threads all is going to disappear. They just so, get hidden in that bloom. I have that glued down quite enough. Let's start this. Actually, I'm going to put a leaf out here, so I'm going to start out here a little bit farther. And oh, okay. And tie that off. Okay. And where's our oh, you need chenille? More oh, you're going to actually, I thought okay. you were going to stitch a leaf, but you're going to make a leaf. Well, I'm just going okay, to. Okay, because it's bias. Because it's bias, I can just start. Let me get the, the end of that stitched down. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to put a leaf right here. So I'm just going to start it right there. Okay. And that hopping foot will just lift up over the top of that. Sure. <laughs> here I go. Good. Yeah, okay. So I just want to get that started, and now I'm just going to shape my leaf. I because can shape it's that. Bias. It curves. It's, it's bias. So I can well, how just. How do you get the point? And all I have, there's no right or wrong side, so all oh. I have to do is flip it. So you're not afraid to do that without gluing it down because no. you're so confident in this? Okay, I am going to take my glue stick and just oh. hold that point in place. But all I did was flip that. Because it doesn't matter. Because there's, there's no right or wrong side. So now I can just stitch up there down here. See, I could put another leaf up at the end. Um, because this is bias, I can do my leaves and vines and just put them wherever I want. Okay. And this foot will lift up if you want to raise it. Oh, good. It. Okay. So. Am I doing that right? Yep. Here, I'll lift it for you. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then you'll put your And then I'll one. do another another leaf here. I'll flip it. Flip it. Bring it around. I'll stick that under there. 
and do a quick. And while you're there, would you consider doing a vine down the center of your leaf? Oh, yep, yeah, because you can do your quilting as you're going along. Right. So if you want, if you want your vine in that, then you would just do that at the same time. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is just stitch my chenille down, and then I can come in up in there and you know, okay, do a couple of little. Vines. Can I try it? Sure. We'll see if I can do it as straight as you were doing it. Well, and that's. That's what's nice is it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you catch that tape, right? that's all you need to do. <sighs> okay, can we bloom it? Where's the brush? It's right behind <laughs> it. I'm going to move this machine aside. We'll do some more, but we got to see how this blooms. It's on the table there. Oh, it's on the table. Okay, here okay. we go. Okay, now when last month we thought you had to wash it, wet it down, but you're, you're saying, let me move this machine aside here. And, okay. No, Go I, I can I can just brush that up <gasps> and see what the texture what the texture is going to do just just that much what, of yeah it. just that much of it you can put some water on it you know give you a little bit different effect but you can see how that just All right. All right. see oh how God. easily that brushes up. And, and it's going to bloom even more when it's washed. So what's this called? It's just a chenille brush, just a little chenille brush. And you can get it off of your and website? you can get it on our website. And your website and is? There are, and there are sometimes, uh, sometimes you're working on a, a small project that you don't want to wash, and so these brushes are really nice because okay. you can just brush it up. Okay, and your website? Fauxchenille.com, F-A-U-X, Fauxchenille. Okay. okay, remember that, we'll post it again. All right. Now, let's see you do your, where are, you, where are you going next? Well, let's do a flower. Okay. Let's work on this petal right and here. And what color are you going to do the flower with? And we're going to put pink on the outside petal. Oh, all right. Want me to open that up? Yeah, let's open that up and do the pink. Because it's the perfect pink for this. How many yards come in this? The 3 8 has 25 yards on a roll. And that would do quite and a bit. And the 5 8 has yeah. 40 yards on it. Oh, okay. And I see that this has seams. And, was, and that doesn't matter because you have 25 continuous yards. That's what's nice about it. You have 25 continuous yards. When you come to a seam, you just saw over that when it blooms. You don't see the seam. You same. don't see the seam. All right, okay. I'm going to move this out of my way a little bit and trim my thread. Okay. We just puddle some out there for you or how? Yeah, that I'm actually going to come down here and go over this a little bit. Now, normally I would go around my, and I can do that now too if you like, I'll, I would go around my edge of my rayage applique with a stitch before I put the chenille on. Okay, go ahead. So let's 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 do that. Let's just and it, and here again, it doesn't have to be perfect because that just has to be stitched down. So it just stays down. Yeah. Have no so I'm you know I'm not doing anything real fancy okay. or doing anything difficult there. Oh. And then I'm going to just lay this down. Okay, I can see that you probably for this I would glue it down. Is that what you're going to do here, just to be? More well, it, it, well, it just makes it a little faster too. You're not trying to work your machine and manipulate okay. the chenille at the same time. So, and I, to make it really easy, I'm just going to I'll run put a, a, run a little glue around where I want the chenille to be. Because this glue washes out anyway. Because this you... washes out, so I'm just going to run a, a little bit of glue around there, and then I can lay my. Oh, yeah. Chenille down over that. And then it ha you get that nice curve. And there's a. Just gonna have to use two hands to get around that curve a little bit. See how that lays down? Yep. And it, I'm just, it just goes right around the curve. And bring that down to the oh, other side. Oh, look, that's And it's perfect. just all in place. Okay. And then I can cut that off. Now, 
you cut that off, but would you consider bending it back and then just move going to your next one? Yeah, if I were if I were doing the whole quilt, I would I would do that. Okay. But just, just for demonstration just, right now, I've just okay. cut that off so that we could maybe also do that the center green piece. Too. Yeah. All right, sure. So once that's glued down, then it's just like the vines. I just have to be able. Oh, that is so easy. And and I'm quilting my quilt at the same time. Right. And once we okay. do that, now I'll put some glue and put the green down. Okay. Can I do this? Do that. Yeah. And All then right. and then you can go back in at the same time and do some quilting. So you'd put that green leaves. over the top, right over the top of this. Right. Or the glue, I mean. You want to stitch it first. Oh. Ooh, I'm not going to. That, it, well, if if you were really doing, it, you know, I would stitch <laughs> on it. A, on a, on okay, a I'll quilt. stitch it. So you want to stitch it around there? I got to do it edge. like then it tells me, or you else wanna, you want to yeah. catch the edge. Because okay. now you don't have to be so careful with your shoe. Okay, so then I'm going to lift up my foot, right, and put that. Let's see. And that's going to be just like your leaf that has a point on it. So what are you going to do? I'm going to flip it. You're going to flip it. Okay, so then I'm going to lay, hold that down there. I've got that glue on there, probably all over my... Okay, around... Just press that down, yeah. Oh, because it curves. To the point, you get to the point and you're just going to flip. Oh, that was the easiest part, Manette. <laughs> Oh, and there's that raw edge that we talked about. And, you, and, you'll, see, and you'll see as you stitch that that it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut that off. But I think I need some more glue right there. Yeah, just to hold that last part. Right. There you go. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now stitch it Stitch down. it. Stitch it down. Okay. I'm there. Whoops. I didn't get it under my foot. That is important. There. Yeah, once you get that started, you're good. Okay, now this, I'm going to put that. Let's go around that point. And now you can go back into that um, applique and, and do some quilting or, and, you know, and up into the flower as well. Oh, okay. So that you're, by the time you finish, your whole quilt is quilted. Right. Now, what are you going to do around here? That will have a piece of chenille around the edge. So like that's the yellow. another raw edge applique, right? So that will have so a yellow. So any place it. it's raw edge, all of this. I'm going to open this up here. All of this will have that chenille around it, plus this vine. And then the outside, you will quilt. I I I just do free motion. You know, on, on a quilt like this, I would probably do swirls. Uh huh. Something simple like that, and. As, as you're doing the butterfly, then you can go back in. You can see on the quilt on the wall behind us that the butterfly has more detail inside his wings. Okay. Uh, as well with, with and, strips and of more chenille. detail in here. And, and you can so you can add detail any place you want to add detail. You can just put some more as chenille. you're quilting the as chenille. As you're quilting it. Oh my goodness, that's so. And funny. adding leaves to your vines, and you're just and when you're finished when you're finished with your applique, your quilt's finished because you've right. done all of that work all in one step. So this works technique works on our long arm. It will work on our Sweet 16 on any sit-down machine or on your domestic machine. On, on a domestic machine. Would you, if you were to do this on a domestic machine to add the chenille, would you quilt it there or would you take no, it to that's, the long arm? No, that's the difference. I mean, that's the advantage of doing it on the long arm. It's because you're doing all that in one step. If I were, if I were doing this on my domestic machine, I would put the appliques on and add the chenille and then put it on the long arm to quilt. And sandwich the uh -huh. back and in sandwich. There. Okay, but this gives you that texture. But this gives you a lot more possibilities because you can do a lot more with your quilting as you're going along. All right, this is, there are so many possibilities with the patterns you've got. With any pattern that you have out there, this is a lot of possibilities. Any raw edge applique. So let's pause for a minute. We're gonna change our quilt out and you'll see another quilt on the wall. And we are going to do another technique with this. So Something hold on, there's Something more. Different. We're back and you've changed your jackets and this is my favorite color of all time. So I think this goes home with me today. Well, we'll be talking more about jackets. Oh, you didn't get, you really didn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you keep it. <laughs> we'll make sure you get one. 
Oh, the, you'll all learn how to do it. Right. Right, because right. we're going to do that we're today, do too. That. We are going to do it. Okay, we have a whole, this is like a trunk show. It is. There's so, so many things you can do. I couldn't resist bringing a lot and of quilts. And I kept saying, pile that on, pile that on, because there's so much inspiration what you can do with quilting on your long arm with this chenille. So first of all, here's this cute little pillow, little owl. Pillows are perfect. It doesn't take, it takes very little time, very little chenille, and you can just do things that are so original and one of a kind. And I noticed you've got a couple of hanging, or wall hangings here, and they are just a pre-printed panel. Pre-printed pre panels are so popular right now. And by adding the, uh, the chenille, it makes it look like an applique. It doesn't look pre-printed anymore. Right. So easy, easy. Just put the chenille on it, all your colors. And speaking of colors, you have a lot of colors. How many do you have? 23 colors now. 20. We're always adding new colors. In both the 3 eighths and the 5 eighths. In both widths. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We have this. is so cute. Now this goes back to our raw edge applique. So the, all this is is raw edge applique on your pillow top and then finish the edges with the chenille. You know, a children's name, a word, so many things you can do with pillows. So this fabric, this textured fabric, tell me about this because I bought some of this once and I've never been able to find it again. It is waffle cloth and we'll have several quilts made out of the waffle cloth. I like using the waffle cloth or a textured fabric on a pillow or a home deck weight on a pillow because it just gives you that extra is this body. available any place, or is someone still making it? Do we well, know? the company that I bought it from is it, we've lost so many of our mills. Yeah, that we don't. We, you know, there are still a few companies that that make the waffle cloth, but you know, okay. a textured fabric, something yeah. with a texture to it, will give you that same kind of a look Just and add feel. Just more texture mm -hmm. to texture, right? Right. All right. Let's put that aside. Can't have too much texture. Oh, this is just. I just fell in love with this. This is you. This is that same textured fabric. This is the waffle cloth again for the base of this quilt. And so it's a whole cloth piece of fabric. Yes. And then you actually use the chenille for the border. I use the chenille to create a frame or a border around the center of my. You have to open it up because you're all going to want to see it. It is just oh, do adorable. So this is a wonder, perfect for a baby quilt. You have the the border, and the, all, all this texture. This is so cute. Cute little girl's quilt. I would think it's a girl's quilt because there's quite a bit of pink in it. So I think we better give boys their due respect here and give them a boy's quilt. And a lot of us just have boys, have four grandsons. So this is just a fun example of how you can personalize a fun quilt for a boy. Such easy piecing and then add that applique again. Is this piece or is it applique? That's on? an applique. Oh, see, I'm saying So I, I, I eliminate so much piecing because everything is just piece. These blocks are just a piece on top of a, a bigger block. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, the center block, again, is the same way. Okay. And on some of the places, I'm, I'm layering the chenille. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, too. Yeah, I see This that is a too. great quilt to personalize. You can add monogram on, on initials. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Ooh, oh, and this one, I just want to cuddle up with it because it's just the cutest quilt. So that same textured fabric, the waffle. The waffle cloth again. Another advantage to the waffle cloth, and the reason I've used it on this quilt, is it has a line on it. So <laughs> a guide. I have a line to follow when I lay down my chenille. I, I'm, I'm, my rows are always going to be straight. Okay, so you didn't piece this first, did you? No. You... How did you do this? I started with a four and a half inch wide strip of the waffle cloth and then sewed down whatever colors I wanted and then I cut it into blocks and into sewed it together. Okay. So, so that then you'd quilt that afterwards. Okay. And you one. did that same fun and the edge. The same edge. And I can just see my little grandkids just doing this. They love that. Oh, it's, they love that it, on their it, face. It, it, it adds to the texture of the quilt yes, to have that yes. chenille edge on it. And you just just used a flannel on the back, keep it all soft. You okay. Could put, you could put a minky or... Now the same technique is here, but you've made it for adults. But look how, how different the look is. Now all of a sudden it's very elegant. Really, it is. But this is just a tone on tone. This is a waffle cloth again, 
but I've just used cream on cream, natural on natural, and added some flowers to some of the centers. And the, the edge again is finished with the chenille. So simple, so simple. Oh, and it's so cuddly and comfortable to. That's what it's all about. It's yes. cozy. It's cozy. <laughs> it's cozy. Okay. Now you've got a couple of bird quilts going on here. This is a bigger one. Let's talk about this one. This one is called Let Freedom Sing. And of course you could do, I've done this in red, white, and blue, but you could do this in bright colors. You could do this in anything and have a totally different look. But here, again, you're using strata or strips of fabric and sewing down the chenille and then cutting your pieces. Oh, and then make your pennants. And then you make your then make your uh, di triangles right. for your bunting. And you have double because you right. got... Okay. Oh. Smart so thinking another there. another fast, easy way. Okay. And the stars, again, are a raw edge applique where the center is cut out of the star and you can take those centers and put them someplace, put them else. someplace else. Okay. All right. And I see here you, you did actually a real binding, but you use this kind of as a piping. When I do, I, I love to do this. If I'm going to put a traditional binding on my quilt, I like to still add an, uh, that detail of the 3 8 inch chenille because it's going to frame my quilt and make it all. Kind so of pop. pretty much everything I'm seeing is the 3 8 inch chenille? On the raw edge applique, that's what I'm using. That's mainly what I'm using on the body of my quilt. Okay. Okay, so the five eighths is where you put all around. You'll your see binding. on another quilt in a minute. Okay, someplace where we don't get the anxious, five eights. right? Oh, this is cute. Another bird quilt. Cute. This, this is, is, a is pattern, another one. Just to show, this is the bird on a wire, and uh, y y the detail of the chenille on the little quilts hanging on the line, I think, is what gives it that vintage mm -hmm. look. You know, it really gives it kind of a fun vintage, and it makes everything pop quilts. again. It's a little flowers and the little quilts hanging on the line. Right. Adorable. Okay. All right. And this is a cute little boy's quilt. Or a daddy's quilt, I guess it, we could call it. Yeah. Well, we better turn quilt this for the beach. A little yeah, something right. for the beach. Now, another new thing that I've done on this quilt is you, you don't have to necessarily have an applique to get a design on your quilt. Okay. So the anchors, all I did was take a plastic template shaped like an anchor and drew it on my block and it gave me a line to follow okay. to stitch the chenille down. So there isn't an applique here or anything. It's just the design of the so chenille. So any design you want to put on. So you, you can put any it. design that you want. Okay. All right. Good ideas. Okay. Now this, the same thing that you just talked about with that one, but what did you use for your pattern? A quilting stencil. How many quilting stencils are there out there? How many I do mean, I own? Just, <laughs> yeah, there are. I mean, and it's quilting stencils are a continuous line. Right. Because you're, the idea is to quilt along that line. So all I did was use a, a, a pounce tool to mark my quilt block. Okay. And then I had a continuous line to follow and just stitch the chenille down over that. So the Did you glue this? Yes. When you followed it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it does yeah. make it easier. Yeah, to it do makes that. it easier. It makes okay. it easier to do. And there again, when you come to a point, all you do is flip it. So it's just, it's just one continuous piece of chenille. Okay, so that's the point. Here, here's a good point right here. This was a flip. That was a you flip. You would never, once it's bloomed, you would never no. know that that has flipped. All those points, all those points, I, I have just flipped. Okay. So the possibilities, I mean, the, the stencils for a border, it'd be wonderful to put a border around a quilt with chenille. Right. Okay, so um, this is a whole cloth piece, even though it looks like it's been pieced. Right. This is uh, a pre-printed, you know, we call them cheater fabrics. I know, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to step out and what I bit. say. <laughs> Cheater fabric. I mean, th this, this particular one really is a cheater fabric because it looks like it's pieced, but because I've stitched, I, all I've done is stitch the chenille over the lines. Oh, because I can it see. It had black lines. It does have like a little it has road black on lines. it. Yeah. yeah. You would never even see that. No. And but it looks it, like you've done all this fabric piecing. instead of looking like it's just pre printed, 
Now it looks like I've pieced this quilt. You worked really hard on mm -hmm. this. I would, took a long time to do. <laughs> okay, now. And this is another, another great example. One of the things that I get asked a lot is, can I quilt over the chenille? Uh, if, you know, if you oh, have, right. you know, if, if, if you're a long armor and you have customers and they bring you a quilt that has chenille on it, can you quilt over it and just do an edge to edge? And you can, because on this quilt, I've just done a very simple edge to edge wavy okay. line all the way across my quilt and back and stitched over the chenille and it just blooms up around that stitching. Okay, because we have the glide foot that goes on all our machines, which is that bowl and it would just glide and right over the top. And it's just going top, to slip right over it. And then you bloom it afterwards. Right. Okay. And this, this one has just been in, you know, then you, then you throw it in the washer and dryer right. and it blooms. Oh, but, okay. So you can quilt over the chenille. Okay, so speaking of cheater panels or pre-printed panels, pre -printed. we have a Dream Big panel. And you see that on the wall behind us. And it is like so amazing it is just so amazing and you as we talked you just reached out got one of those panels and it's well I, I saw you quilting some of the dream big panels on one of your episodes and I thought oh I have to have one of these <laughs> because I could just see the Chanel on it right. I could just imagine what the Chanel was going to do um, for that panel and it's beautiful and the thing that you did was you actually use two layers of the chenille on that. Right. And this is, we have a panel on here now. So One of the things that I loved about this panel is the colors were very subtle. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the, tr and the transformation from one petal to the next to the yeah. next. But what I wanted to be able to do was really accent those petals so that you would see the definition you of did. the flower. Really and did. I think the chenille really does that. But I didn't want to use just a bright color on that because I wanted to keep subtle. I wanted to keep it subtle like the like the print of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So what I've done what I did was layer a white on top of the color. Okay, do you glue each one down individually or do you just Well, I glue yeah, I glue the uh, I'll glue the yellow one down first. Should I start on Absolutely. On this? Yes. I'm going to put the yellow down first. That's the color I want underneath. That's going to be my accent color. Okay. And so I am going to just, we'll, we'll pick this petal right here for our first petal. And I, I'm going to lay the yellow down first. And just follow the line. Again, when I'm, I get to the top, I'm just going to flip and bring that down. And then I'll just do it again and, and layer so a white. So when you stitch it, you're stitching just the one time. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to stitch. I can stitch both of them down at the same time. And just lay the white down on top of the yellow. Flip it. Flip it. Thank you. And now I have two layers. Oh, okay, can I bring the machine in? Bring the machine in. All right. All right. So we talked about this before, is we can hold that down. I held that real tight, and we were able to get that under there. I'll just get this ready. But I, I won't stitch. I'll let you stitch, okay? I'll do, okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. And, this, and we're just going to stitch this the same way. And like I said, it's just, you just want to make sure you're getting down the center. And it doesn't have to be right down the center, but you just want to make sure you're catching both, both, fabrics. both fabrics. And that's. Yep, there you there go. There I go. And that's how easy that, that quilt was done. Okay, so. We have this square foot on, and this is our case with the square foot showing these. Where there's two different sizes. I just wanted to show those. You got the half inch, and let's see. I can't even remember the size of them. 
but you've got the two different sizes. Oh, and it's perfect. It just it just so you could use, slides you could right over the chenille. Yeah, and makes it so easy to do your quilting and your chenille placement at the same right. time. Right. Okay. Here comes the day of. You have to chenille. I'll move the machine aside. Because do you want to wet it or just chenille it? Oh, let's wet it. Okay. Where it, did it, the, where'd you put get my, even the more. scissors? We'll get even more. There they are. There they are. Here's the scissors. <laughs> there we go. We'll okay. Some threads, and I'll just spray a little. I'll try not to drown it. Is that enough? <laughs> That's good. And now see when when that starts to come up, then you that's when you see the color underneath the white. Mm-hmm. And so that's just subtle. And that's what happened on the quilt behind us. It 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 looked very white until that chenille was all fluffed up. Did that worry you when you saw that very white? But you, you knew. No, that because I knew it. You was knew. Happening. You knew. Oh, can I do this? I knew what it was going to do. And I wanted just that subtle um, color. I didn't want the color to overpower the panel. Uh-huh. But then when you're finished, you would go in here and quilt like some feathers. Right, and, right. And then quilt. And if I mean, you didn't this, want yeah, to these, wash these it. These feathers, these petals are a wonderful place to just um, practice, free practice motion. your free motion. And I, I love to do feathers, so I did feathers in, in mine. And if you don't want to wash it, then you would just do this. Then you could just brush it. Brush it, and there it is. Oh, that is so fun. That is... And it goes together so quickly. And this panel is so beautiful with so many ideas for quilting. And I mean, that was an afternoon project for oh, me really? when I did that. That's wonderful. Okay, now we're ready to... The next thing we want to do is actually talk about your jackets and your wearable art. So we're going to change and out that's a what we're bit. going to do next. And that's, that's going to be a fun surprise. Yes. I'm so surprised. Okay. Let's just come on back. Well, Nanette, you have dressed us up for this one. This is so beautiful. I this is going to be something fun and different and it's to do all on with, your long arm. And it's all with the arm. chenille. It's all with the chenille. So let's so, show. First of all... This is like, what do you call this? A sh uh, well, it's almost a poncho kind of a style or, or, or a wrap that you can bring up and button on, your, on the shoulder. Yes. And, but this is all just chenille. There's no base on these. This is just chenille. And your jacket? And the my same jacket thing. is done the same way. Okay. And so we have some other jackets. One of the fun things that you can do with it is create a plaid, like the one that you have on. It doesn't have to be solid like my jacket. So on this, I've created a plaid. And once you have the chenille laid down, you can chenille on top of the chenille. <laughs> and so I've added more accents and detail to the front of the okay. jacket with more chenille and yarn. Okay, because I'm seeing a little time. glittery stuff going. Is that yarn? And that's yarn that I've stitched down at the same time as I stitched the chenille. Okay. All right, and then you wore this just before, which is my favorite color. The thing that I love about these jackets is the texture of them. I mean, it almost feels like so you're wearing a sweater. So drapeable. Like a, lightweight, yeah. like a lightweight sweater. And they're fun to wear because people can't figure out what you did. Yeah. Is that crocheted? Is it knitted? So you put a little tie in this back to just kind yeah, of... Yeah, you have, yeah, because the, what, we're doing this on water-soluble stabilizer give you a hint of what we're going to be doing. And so when that washes away, you have holes in it. It's oh. open. Oh, so and you then can, you can You can weave things. ribbons. You can oh. you could weave a, a silk ribbon all the way around the front of that jacket. Wonderful things that you could do with it. Oh. Okay. The next jacket, you've added a collar to it. Oh, it's kind of a shrug? Well, and this one's, yeah, this is a shrug, so it has kind of a, a shawl collar, and when this is on, you have a, a peplum kind of shrug fit to it. And this is another one, if you turn it around, you can see the back where I did navy blue and then I did chenille on top of the chenille again. You can create, do any kind of a pattern design. or design on top of that that you want. Okay. Wow. All right. And? And I couldn't resist showing a child's jacket because children just love the texture right. of it. Right. And so this, this is on a, on a solid, almost a denim-like fabric again. 
and you can just do a simple lattice design on it. And I've eliminated almost all the construction because I don't have facings, I don't have hems. All my edges, again, are finished with a chenille. Right. Even the loops and buttons, even the loops for the buttons Always are made chenille. out of the chenille. And that's strong enough mm -hmm. that it'll, it'll yeah, stitch. Yeah, you just, you just fold it in half and stitch down the center so that stitch is making that very okay, strong. Okay, that's strong, right. And make, to make a oh, loop. How cute is that? So for children, I mean, you can, you can stitch it onto a denim jacket. You can do all kinds of right. things with clothing. Okay. But what we're going to do today is really fun. You're gonna, I'm gonna just move all this out of the way. Let's step this over here. So I've got your patterns, some of them, here. Your, your, uh, well, we have a full line of, of quilt patterns, but I also have some clothing patterns, and that's what we're going to be doing today is the lattice jacket. So we've got the Venetian windows, the hexagon pattern, and the butterfly garden and our lattice jacket. So you help all the way through in really knowing how to do this with your well, all the instructions. Right. right. Okay. All your step by step. Now. So the, we're going you can you can take your favorite jacket pattern and do this technique. Okay. Okay. This is the cardigan jacket that I have on that's that is our pattern, which is a great way to start because that gives you the instructions to know how to start with it. But all you have to, we're working on water soluble stabilizer. Okay, so I know water soluble stabilizer when I do machine embroidery, it's plasticky. And that's not the kind that you want to use for this project. You want the water soluble stabilizer that almost feels like a fabric, has it's the texture a of a fabric. It almost, it's not woven, but it has that kind of a feel to it so that you have something to stitch to. So that then, but then when it washes, that dissolves. That's, that's all, all going to go away and. That, this one have this wonderful so texture. So where do I get this? Well, we have it on our website. And in order to do it on your long arm, you need a big sheet Okay. Of the stabilizer. Mm -hmm. So it comes in a two yard cut, 60 inches wide. Okay. Which is big enough for you to draw all of your pants, sleeves, sleeves front and everything. Back. The thing that you want to be sure and do when you're, when you're drawing the outside line of your pattern piece is to make sure that when you do your fronts, you do a left and a right front. That's, that's I did that once. <laughs> I ended up with two right fronts. That doesn't work. <laughs> then you had to make another jacket, That doesn't right? work. <laughs> yeah. So you want to have a left and a right front. You want to have two opposite sleeves. And when you do your back, you're going to mark your center back and flip it so that you have one whole okay. piece for your back, a solid okay. back. And you always, for sure, include your your seam allowances. Yeah, and your seam allowances are going to be on there. And when, when I sew this on, I'm going to go actually beyond these lines. Okay. You don't have to go exactly right in the lines. Then what I'll do after I finish it and I take it off the frame, I'll put my pattern piece on there and trim it down. Oh. So you don't have to be, again, okay. you don't have to be that careful about what you're doing. Okay. okay. And you mark this with just like a Sharpie? I just used a Sharpie. Okay. I just, I just need to be able to see where well, the outline of my jacket. Yes. And how do you make sure that you are always straight lines, or do you care? Well, if on this jacket it's very simple because the center front and the center back of the jacket are a straight line. So that's always my starting point. Okay. And the bottom of my jacket is okay. a straight line. If I'm doing something like the shrug where I don't have straight lines, then I will mark a straight of brain line somewhere and start at that point. Okay. Okay. So all right. So you're just working in straight Just trying to think of all the lines. questions that I'm going to need to know okay. when this happens. <laughs> but this, this is so, so simple. So I'm us for this, I'm using the 5 8 inch width. So just because it gives it more body? Um, yeah. I mean, you, it, you want an, a little bit of a little more look. heavier look to it. Uh, I do use, however, like the one that you have on, I have on this one, I have three rows of the navy and five eighths, and then a row of khaki and the three eighths, and that's giving you. That's why you have a plaid. Oh, okay. So you can. I I do use the three eighths with the five eighths, but primarily five eighths. Okay. All right. On this. Okay. So we're ready. The five eighths. Ready to make this the back of this. Uh, we're going to start with the back of the jacket. Okay. It's all been outlined. It's it's on our water soluble stabilizer. 
And all I'm going to do, I'm going to lay the first strip down. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit beyond my lines because when this is all finished and I take it off the frame, I'm going to put the pattern piece back on top of it again. And then and cut just, it down. Uh -huh, and then just cut it. So I've already started this, and I'm just going to get this started and see it just... Wow. That's, I'm just going to hold this down. And I'm starting in the center back so that I have a straight line to follow. And I'm not even going to have to cut anything or... So then you're going to go back that now way? No, I'll go back the other way. Okay. And I'm just going to do one row next to the other. So I'm just going to lay another row down here, about how long I want it to be. Cut that off. And then I'm going to put it over here. And again, because... I'm just going to line that up a little bit as I go. It doesn't have to be it's just close to the middle of the line. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to do that until this whole back jacket is filled with so vertical lines. So then what would that look like? You're just going to have vertical lines of so chenille. So I think you have a sample. <laughs> well, another thing that you can do is make scarves. And this is so and cool. And this is, you know, and, and you can see with a scarf. Okay, so this is the first step, is so to stitch. So that's the first step. But we stitched all the vertical lines. Now on a scarf, I leave a little bit of a space. Okay. Because I want a little more of an, open, mm -hmm. an open look to it. On the jacket, that's row after row. On a scarf, I've left a little bit of a space. But once you get all the vertical lines down, then you're going to go back and stitch horizontal across the other way. And again, on the jacket, it's going to be solid. Or your horizontal and then your vertical. Right. <laughs> Whichever way you I know. <laughs> I'm going, okay. And then, and, then, and then it will look like that when it's finished. Okay. So you'll have it stitched both directions. And now I see you added fringe to it. The only thing you have to do, the only thing the chenille has to have is a stitch on it. And then you and can it almost treat it. it like yarn. So now I can make fringe. But when I make fringe, I've just taken the chenille and stitched it by itself, run it through the machine. Okay. So you can see that it has a row of stitching on there. Mm hmm And then I'm going to make a loop to make a fringe because if I just cut pieces, then this would wear away. Okay, okay. so let's look at the way that so fringe looks. So take a look looks. at that. But the magic that happens when you wash it are, is that those it loops twists. twist up on themselves and creates a tendril. Okay. So you can make fringe. All you right. could even add French to the bottom of your jacket. I mean, you could do right. so many things to yeah. it with it. And af yeah, okay. So, yeah, you could put this a fringe around an afghan or blanket type thing. Oh, yeah. If you like that, just by doing that. Just by doing, just by doing that. I've, I've added it to handbags before. You can add it to all kinds of things. Oh, right. Well, that's simple. And then that's just the water soluble. You just throw it in the washer or just, you just put it in water. Oh, you have I, to wash it. You have to, you have to wash it. So but it I, I, I will usually take my jacket and just run it under the, under the sink and just wash a lot of it out before I throw it in my wash. But then I just throw it in my washing machine. Okay. Always make, you might want to use, the other thing that I would suggest on the long arm is you use a little bit heavier thread. Um, okay. On like the water a 40 soluble. weight? Yeah, like a 40 weight. Because when that washes away, Mm -hmm. All that's holding that it's together that is the thread. Would you say a heavier thread on the, as your bobbin thread as yes. well? Yes, and I would use the same on the bobbin and on okay. the top. Okay, okay. Uh, because you don't even see the thread color. No. So it doesn't matter what thread, because I think, yeah, I wouldn't even know what thread color you use there. Well, you really can't tell. It all just disappears. When this, when this blooms and when that's washed and dried, it's, you, can't see the, you can't see the thread. When it blooms or when it's washed and dried, do you find you get a lot of lint? From this, or does does no? It this is not going to be like a rag quilt because we are working with perfect bias. So when you stitch down the center of this tape, you're catching every thread. 
and it's not going to leave. It's mm -hmm. there because you've there. stitched it. And your stitch length, you would suggest what, about a 12? You're going to or? use a shorter stitch length on the water soluble. Okay. Again, because when the stabilizer goes away, that thread needs to hold all those. Right. Hold that it, together. it needs to hold all those threads. Okay. So uh, use yeah use a shortened stitch line. So you don't have to do facings. You don't have to do cuffs. I mean it's there it is those pieces sew them together and well and again the the one thing that I do for finishing afterwards after your jacket is finished all you have is a shoulder seam a side seam and sew your sleeve in. Mm -hmm. That's your construction. And then to finish the edges I just take another row of chenille and go around the edge and it gives you this really nice. Yes. Edge. Yes. You can even do loops on, on my the jacket I have on. I've even done little. Oh, loops. Okay. I mean, you can do so much detail. Whatever. Whatever you can think of, you can do. And you can think of it all. You and have I'm, so much inspiration. And one thing just leads to another. Once you start doing one project, you think, oh, what would happen if? And that's I what do we this. found out when we after we visited your studio and then we came back here and started playing and looking and thinking, well, what about this or what about that? So it was really we were so excited. Well, I've been doing this for years. I'm always coming up. It was just like the the flower quilt that we did on mm -hmm. the digital print, the dream big. Right. I mean, that you, was you something see, new. That was something new that I hadn't seen before. I saw in one of your videos and I thought, oh, I have to do that with the Chanel. Yes. Okay, we have got a great big surprise. You One ready? more thing. One more thing. I want to give some of your viewers some of this chenille to play with. Okay. So let's say three people. Three viewers. Make a comment, your favorite color, and what you're going to do with it. And with one roll, you have 40 yards on a roll, so you could finish the edge of a quilt, you can embellish something, you could put it on blocks, you could make like, two scarves. You can do a lot with 40 yards. Okay, so three viewers today, make the comment, what you're going to do with it and what color, and will there will be a drawing on winning this. And... And... Oh, yes! Yeah. And you're going to give everyone the pattern. The pattern for the In the link below the video, link to the pattern and you'll get this. And this is called a strip piece baby quilt. Strip piece But you can make quilt. it any size you want and that will be, a, a, we'll, we'll give that to your viewers for, for free. For everyone. For everyone. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. you. This has been so fun to get to know you and to see the inspiration, everything that's going on in your head. It's just crazy. I think everyone will have a fun time with this. They will. It is. I've enjoyed it. We've all enjoyed it in our studio. So thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us. Join us next month on another HQ Live.